beloved in Christ, at this Christmas tide, let it be our care and delight to hear again the message of the angels. And in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass. And the babe lying in a manger. Therefore, let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God. From the first days of our disobedience unto the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. But first... Let us pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace on earth and goodwill among all his people, for unity and brotherhood within the church he came to build, and especially in this our diocese. And because this will rejoice his heart, let us remember in his name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, the sick, and them that mourn, the lonely, and the unloved, the aged, and the little children, all those who know not the Lord Jesus, who love him not, who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore, and in a greater light, the multitude which no man can number, whose hope was in the world made flesh, and with whom, in the Lord Jesus, we are one forevermore. This prayers and praises, let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven, in the words which Christ himself taught us. Please may we kneel. And pray together, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, here as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for the kingdom. Comfortably to Jerusalem. 
Jerusalem and cry unto her that how that cried in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, shall be exalted, shall be exalted. Shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill made low. The crooked street and the rough places straight, the crooked straight, and the row of places plain, and the row of places plain. Every valley shall be exalted. Every valley, every valley shall be exalted. And every mountain and hill make low the crooked straight, the crooked straight, the crooked straight, and the rough places plain. Places plain, and the rough places plain. The crooked straight and the rough places
God announces in the Garden of Eden that the seed of woman shall bruise the serpent's head. That evening, they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden, and they hid themselves among the trees. The Lord God called to Adam, Why are you hiding? And Adam replied, I heard you coming and didn't want you to see me naked, so I hide. Who told you you were naked? The Lord God asked, Have you eaten fruit from the tree I warned you about? Yes, Adam admitted. But it was the woman you gave me who brought me some, and I ate. Then the Lord God asked the woman, How could you do such a thing? The serpent trickled me, she replied. So the Lord God said to the serpent, This is your punishment for the domestic and wild animals of the whole earth to be caused. You shall grovel in the dust as long as you live, crawling along on your belly. From now on, you and the woman will be enemies as will all of your offspring and hers. And I will put the fear of you into the woman. And between your offspring and hers, he shall strike you on your head while you will strike at his heel. This is the word of God.
God promises to faithful Abraham that in his seat shall the nation of the earth be blessed. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time. I make a vow by my own name, the Lord is speaking, that I will richly bless you because you did this and did not keep back your only son from me. I promise that I will give you as many descendants as there are stars in the sky or grains of seeds along the seashore. Your descendants will conquer their enemies. All the nation will ask me to bless them as I have blessed your descendants, all because you obey my command. This is the word of the Lord. Thank <laughs> you. 
Congregational, page four. Congregational hymn, page four. The third lesson is taken from Isaiah chapter 9, beginning at verse 2. Christ's birth and kingdom are foretold by Isaiah. The, prof the people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. 
those who dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. You have multiplied the nation and increased its joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy of harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For you have broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the road of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every warrior sandals from the noisy battle and garment rolled in blood will be used for burning and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward ever forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. This is the word of the Lord.
Our fourth lesson is taken from the book of Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 to 4. The prophet Micah foretells the glory of little Bethlehem. Now, but thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Therefore, will he give them up until the time that she which traveled had brought forth, then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. And he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall abide, for now shall he be great unto the ends of the earth. This is the word of the Lord.
congressional, page 6. The fifth lesson is taken from the gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 1, beginning from the 26th verse. The angel Gabriel salutes the Blessed Virgin Mary. Now, in the sixth month, Angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting 
these words. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold the men servants of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. For why is it granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which we are told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in the Lord my Savior. For he has regarded the lonely states of his men servants. For below, behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. This is the word of the Lord.
the sixth lesson is taken from the book of St. Luke, chapter 2, beginning to read at the first verse. St. Luke tells of the birth of Jesus. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with a child. So it was that while they were there, the days and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. This is the word of God.
We are on page seven, presentation by the children choir, after that presentation by women choir, and after that, St. Matthias House Primary Chapel Choir will have their presentation. But now, by children choir, presentation by children choir.
The seventh lesson is taken from the gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 2, beginning at the eighth verse. The shepherds go to the manger. Now they were in the same country, shepherds living out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in a swaddling cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavens, of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has been known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. This is the word of the Lord.
lesson is taken from the gospel as recorded by St. Matthew, chapter 2, from verse 1. The wise men are led by the star to Jesus. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And when he sent them, and he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me, that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and men. This is the word of God. Time all over the world 
spreads the tide in every
May we rise for the gospel. The Holy Gospel is written in the gospel according to St. John, chapter 1, beginning from the first verse. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the world became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of Christ. O oh Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You have ordained praise even in the mouth of the babes. And God, we have gathered unto you just to worship the majesty of your glory. Father, thank you for such a joyous moment in your presence. Oh, May our hearts and our life be a praise unto you all through our lives. Now speak to us in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulder and his name will be called wonderful there will be no end Upon and establish it with judgment and that time forward, even forever, of hosts will perform this. The word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters and fathers in God, we thank God for such a time like this as we draw close to the end of the year. Actually, it marks the beginning of the Christian calendar, the Advent. 
and the Advent leads us to the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ, the Christmas, leading up to Epiphany and on into the year. We want to thank God for the Darcyson Choir and indeed the officials of the Darcyson Choir. In fact, as I sat down there, I was overwhelmed. Thank you so much. You are just glorious. You are wonderful. Thank you. It is a delight to be here this evening. I, I, I was wondering, I said, if it is like this on earth, how will heaven be? Amen. When these young children came out and sang, I say indeed, God is glorified. And uh, one of the things I have always told our Diocesan Choir is that any group that is not self-sustaining is just looking for trouble. They need to be independent, able to stand on their own. Not everything they will have to do, they will run to the diocese in order to release money to them. And I have also talked to the AYF. The AYF of the Diocese of Abuja should own their own boss and be able to stand. If we are doing it in the small, small dioceses, how much more here? And uh, this evening I was told that they have opened an account. And I will encourage you to encourage our diocesan choir. Please. With what we have seen this evening and the sacrifice they have given, I am trusting God that Greater days are ahead of us. Amen. Amen. We are celebrating the Lord Jesus Christ. And this earth of Jesus Christ changed humanity and indeed changed history. Because Jesus is the center of human history. And even now, our history is divided into two, the BCE and the AD before Christ's era and at the Anno Dominum, which has to do with after his death and resurrection. So everything that has ever happened in human history are put within these two categories. And so, just as the cross of Christ is the center of the scripture, as the Old Testament looks forward to the coming of the Messiah, the New Testament looks back to bear witness that he has come, he has died, he is risen, he is exalted, and he is coming back again. And so the whole of the human history is walking towards a telos, an end. And that end is the return of the Son of God. And in this service, our theme for this year's carol is praise the everlasting king. Praise the everlasting king. And our text is taken from Isaiah chapter 9. This season is the season of prayer and rejoicing and of praise. But as we rejoice in what God has done, we must also be aware of the move of the world to commercialize this good tiding of great joy. Christmas is now becoming a very big business season, has always been. And just as it was in the first Christmas, there is bound to be much travels. And 
Hospitality business booms at such a time as this. So much so that when Mary and Joseph went to Judea, to Bethlehem, they could not find a room in the inn. And up till today, it has remained so. Brethren, we must not allow Jesus Christ to be taken out of Christmas because Jesus Christ is the reason for the season. And as we celebrate the birth of Jesus and sing praises unto the King of glory, the everlasting King, I believe that what we ought to ask ourselves at such a time as this, the same question the people in Jerusalem asked when Jesus entered Jerusalem as king, and the whole city was stirred up, and the people asked, who is this? And as we look at that question, who is this? We can see from the readings right from the time of the fall of man in Genesis chapter 3 from verse 15 up until the last reading of the mystery of the incarnation that the word which is God took flesh and dwelt among us. Brethren, we have followed the promises of God and the prophetic messages concerning the birth, life, ministry, death, resurrection, and the glorious hope that we have in Christ Jesus. As we look at Isaiah chapter 9, from verse 1 to 7, we see there what God has spoken concerning Jesus Christ, his life, his reign as king, and the impact of his coming. In verse 6, we see there the mystery of the incarnation as the prophet prophesied, for unto us a child is born. And speaking of a child that is born, Isaiah was actually speaking about the humanity of Jesus Christ. That this God, who in the beginning created the heavens and the earth, and created man in his own image, even when man had fallen into sin and fallen away from the grace and presence of God, God came down searching for man. The word who had been with God took flesh and dwelt among us. Yet, he was not diminished as God. He remained the light of the world. He remained the light of life. He remained the life of men, and as many as will put their trust in him shall not perish, but will live the everlasting life, the life of God. This child that was born is one that shared not only in our humanity, but in our suffering. He shared who we are so that he will redeem us from the bondage of sin and death and make us inheritors of God's blessings and the kingdom. He is the seed of the woman, just as God promised in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. He is the seed of Abraham, as God promised Abraham Genesis chapter 22, verse 18, saying, In your seed, 
all the nations, all the people groups, all peoples of the world shall be blessed. He is the son of David, which we can see in that covenant that God made with David in 2 Samuel chapter 7, from verse 11 to 14b, in which God stopped David from building the temple that he wanted to do, to build, and said, no, it is your son who rule, sit upon your throne that will build the temple. Yes, Solomon built the temple, but Solomon did not live forever because God said that his kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom. Solomon died and many other kings from the lineage of David they all died. But out of the seed, out of the lineage of David, and out of the house of Jesse, and out of the house of Jesse, God raised Joseph. And through that lineage, <clears throat> the Savior was born, the Son of David, the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one. And in Isaiah chapter 7, we can also see that this son of David, who was promised by God, whose kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, would be one that will be born by a virgin. For a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. In Micah chapter 5, verse 2, we see there not only the prophecy of the place of Bethlehem where he would be born, but also he will be the ruler over all Israel and indeed an eternal ruler whose goings forth or origin has been from eternity or everlasting. He is the everlasting king. And in fact, reading down that uh, uh, Micah's prophecy, we can see a great emphasis in the fact that Jesus is the everlasting king. His kingdom will extend all over the world and he shall reign eternally. At his birth, the angelic host sang in praise as we see in Luke chapter 2 verses 13 and 14 and they also gave the message of great joy. And even up to today, heaven and nature are still singing his praise. In fact, Christmas is in the air. And as you walk around, you, you see the lifting of our spirit. You hear songs. You feel good. You know that there is something happening around us that is extraordinary, but of great wonder. And that comes from God. Brethren, the message that the angel, the angels gave to the shepherds is still the message that God has for us today. As we see in Luke chapter 2, from verse 9, and behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Verse 10, then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, 
I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Indeed, when you look around us in this nation, in our personal family, and even in our communities, you will see thick darkness that covers the people. But within this thick darkness of sin and wickedness, God has chosen to step into our darkness and be the light of life. Amen. And as it was in that first Christmas, when the angels and the hosts of, end of heaven came down, their message was, do not be afraid. And the Bible confirms that as they descended, the glory of the Lord shone around. Light in the midst of darkness. Oh, may we experience the presence of God that will cast away every darkness and every sorrow and every oppression and every power that emanates from the pit of hell that is working against us. May that perish in the name of Jesus. I don't know what you may be contending with, but the message of the angel to the Shepherds is the message for Henry. I don't know about you. He is saying, don't be afraid. There are so many things we are afraid of. There are many concerns, many worries. But the Lord is standing in our midst even this night and he's saying, don't be afraid. Fear not. For there is born to you to you, for you, for me, for us, a savior, a redeemer, a helper, our hope, our strength. Brethren, you don't know it to be afraid. God himself is saying, don't be afraid. Therefore, cast your fear at his feet. Bring your concern to him. Leave what he will do with it. For it is for this purpose that the Son of God was made manifest, that he might destroy everything that the enemy has built or planted or, or strategically located, uh, put in place. Jesus is made manifest in order to annul them. And so, brothers and sisters, let us rejoice. Let us rejoice. Because God has remembered us. Let us rejoice because God is paying attention to what is troubling us. Let us rejoice because God has given us a son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to the end that whosoever that believes in him shall not perish but we have everlasting life. He did it right at the right time. Galatians chapter 4, from verse 4 to 7, says, In the fullness of time, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, that he might redeem them that are under the law. And if the Son of God will redeem and set you free, you are free indeed. We are no more slaves to fear, slaves to Satan, slaves to the, to the powers of hell. No, we are set free. And if we are children of the living God, we are inheritors of his promises. And brother, sister, that is what we have as benefit for the coming of the Son of God. Amen. Praise God. And as the scripture says, he comes to rule, he comes to reign. He comes to rule, he comes to reign. And the government will be upon 
his shoulder and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace and the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Authority and rulership belongs to him. He is to be called the Great One, the Holy One, the Son of Man, the Son of God, the Son that has come to redeem us, the Son of David. I'm talking about his rulership. Jacob said something concerning his children. He was about to die. In Genesis chapter 49, from Genesis to Revelation, everything was speaking about Jesus. Talking about Judah, the tribe from which Jesus came, Talking about Judah, the location of Bethlehem, and the tribe of David. Just Jacob said, Judah, you are he whom your brothers shall praise. Your hand shall be the neck of your enemies. Amen. You are the Judah. You have connection to this inheritance by your faith in Jesus Christ. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. Your father's children shall bow down before you. Judah is a lion's whip. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He bows down, he lies down as a lion. And as a lion, who shall rouse him? The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Amen. Nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes and Shiloh has come. That is what we are celebrating. Praise the Lord. And he shall be the obedience of the people binding his, his donkey to the vine and his donkey's coat to the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. Amen. Remember Jacob is talking about Jesus coming and Revelation says he is the lion of the tribe of uh, Judah. And again, here, he's talking about the scepter in his hands. And in fact, he says that he will bind his donkey and the donkey's coat. Remember him riding into Jerusalem. God is awesome. God is awesome. Brethren, the word of God is to be trusted. This is Jesus, our Shiloh, our lion of the tribe of Judah. He has come. He came and his robe was stained with the blood. He died for me. He died for you. Do not be afraid. Amen. Brethren, he is the son of man whom Daniel prophesied in Daniel chapter 7. In Daniel chapter 7, hear the word of God again. The mystery of his nativity and the mystery of his kingdom. In Daniel chapter 7 from verse 13, he says, I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man. And the Son of Man was what Jesus was calling himself. One like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the ancient of days, to the Father. 
And they brought him near before him. Verse 14. Then to him was given dominion and glory. Amen. Amen. To Jesus, the Son of God, the Father, the Ancient of Days, gave dominion and glory and, and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom and his kingdom the one that which shall not be destroyed. Roman Empire has risen and fallen. Soviet Union has risen and fallen. British Empire has risen and fallen. America is on throne now. It's controlling the world. But one day, it will be another story. But the desire of God is that all the kingdoms of this world will become that of our God and of his Christ. Amen. Amen. But you know one thing that is so amazing? This glorious Lord, this born king, who died and rose and is exalted is coming back again. Revelation the final gathering the final gathering when he shall come to collect his own. And after these things behold I looked and behold a great multitude of which no one could number of the nations of tribes of peoples, of tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. Amen. Clothed in white robes with palms in their hands, the sign of their victory, and crying out and, and with a loud voice saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb. Amen. All the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. He is coming back again. Are you ready? Across the skies, 
Show a Jesus in a to manger lies We are to share us with thee from us to, to you. rise To see the Savior of the world Oh, now, oh, I carry him to Bethlehem To see the Lord appear to man Just as for us was the stable day The Prince of Glory when he came Bring us glory to the heart of man. Sing the blood of little baby can be salvation to the soul. Oh, now, oh, now carry me to Bethlehem to see the Lord appear to men. Yeah. Just as for us was a stable then, the Prince of Glory when he came. Because of Christmas Day 
Page nine. The Lord be with you. Please rise for the peace. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name. And we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. COVID is over. <laughs> Just greet one another. This is Christmas. <laughs> God bless you. Peace. 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 The Lord be with you. Please be seated. We want to make welcome every one of us and I appreciate you for making time to come. And uh, we want to thank our clergy, the dignitaries, archdeacons and canons, and uh, for mobilizing our people, encouraging us to come. Thank you for coming to share in this joy of Christmas. We appreciate this wonderful choir. Please let us appreciate them. We also want to thank the wonderful choir of St. Matthias Chapel. All of them are our, our workers. They will walk from morning till evening and still yet have time to practice and to present. And um, you can see that Linus is not only good in adding money, he also knows how to sing and how to conduct. So we want to appreciate all of you for your sacrifice. Love. We thank the women choir. Please appreciate our mothers. And also we appreciate the children's choir. And uh, the the instrumentalists that have been playing both in the men choir and our brother, I think you, 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 you will have to do it again. <laughs> Thank you so much. You know, this was the kind of excitement that made Peter to say, Lord, let us build three abanaco here. But we have to go. Thank you so much. Tomorrow is the 11th of December and it's so special to us because that Advent, our Advent ordination, Advent ordination will be tomorrow and the time is 9 o'clock and uh, we will want us to turn up 
in this number. So parishes that may want to have their parish service, please, it must be for one hour, from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock. Um, instead of reading the Old Testament and the epistle, just take the gospel and preach the message and finish in time and come. Um, tomorrow, there will be the ordination of the diaconate and the priesthood and also licensing of our new lay readers. But apart from the licensing of the new lay readers, the old lay readers of the diocese will renew their covenant with God. And so, let them come dressed for service. And um, I have already told the clergy tomorrow will be a processional service. Tomorrow will be processional service. And because it will be a processional service, we will use our copes. The archdeacons of the uh, statutory archdeaconries and those who will play roles in the service. And um, after the service, I will want to see the archdeacons in my vestry so as to hem in all that we need to do tomorrow. I, I, was, I thought that we are putting up the choir account. Please project it again. Once again, I want to plead with us to support our diocesan choir. My eyes will be on this account. <laughs> so give to support them. It won't be too much if they have a vehicle or something to move about because I think that you need to go beyond Abuja. <laughs> Apart from this Christmas, the assistant Christmas carol of nine lessons in Easter, pay attention. Holy Saturday, we will have Easter cantata and we will meet again like this to celebrate the resurrection. And um, uh, we, we will want you to get ready. That will be in April. So uh, Holy Saturday, we will have Easter cantata to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. It will be like this. It will be a diocesan program. So thank you. Any other notices? Eh? Okay. Uh, no, tell them. I don't make those. No. Thank you, Your Grace. Immediately after now, the refreshment, please. The rest of the congregation out there, the choir have been taken care of. The whole priest, the, the clergy and wives should go to um, cathedral shop, somebody will be there to attend to you. Thank you very much. Look at page 12, page 12 of our program. You will see the new or proposed Abuja Diocesan Anthem. We shall sing it at the close of this uh, program and tomorrow. And uh, I would like to have your feedback and what you think we need to do. Uh, this will be the first time that we will be singing it. Thank you.
pray. O oh Lord, our God, who didst manifest your love towards us by sending thy only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him, grant us by thy Holy Spirit the precious gift of faith whereby we may know that the Son of God has come and help us to join our praises with the song of the heavenly hosts. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, good will towards men. And so, Lord, watch over your children as they go forth from this holy place. Grant us a happy night rest and wake, up, wake us up tomorrow in new strength that as we gather in your presence, we may worship you in spirit and in truth. Refresh all those whom you have used to be a blessing to us in this service of the carol of nine lessons of this diocese. Lord, bless the choir. Amen. Bless your people. Amen. And may that which we have read and that which we have sung and that which we have heard with our outward ears be grafted into our hearts. By your mercy, Lord, help us to bring forth fruit that will glorify you. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Almighty God bless us with his grace. Christ, give us the joys of everlasting life. And unto the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of angels bring us all. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. to love and to serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. We shall stand as we take the decision anthem.
beaming from the nation's capital, we bring to you the good news through various programming, news updates, worship, and teachings. The paralysis of sin makes us to be separated from God. Contact us for your live streaming solutions and event coverage, such as seniors, conferences, seminars, revivals, and lots more. Engage us in showcasing your brands and services to the world through adverts and sponsorship. We also offer latest broadcast equipment for rent, all at affordable prices. For inquiries, please call. Via inquiries at acnntv.com. ACNN, reaching the world with the undiluted word of God. Joy to